to do is just talk a little bit more about the Foundation of Scotland and what we actually can provide for communities and developers in terms of fund management. Um, so if you remember back to Rachel's presentation, she talked about these three things, these three kind of planks of what Foundation Scotland focuses on in terms of community benefit. And I just want to focus on the central one, supporting fund delivery. However, I would say it's actually a lot easier or a lot more informed, uh, a much more informed position uh, being involved in fund delivery if you've been involved in the previous bit, which is the discussions around how the funds are going to be set up and uh, who's going to benefit and all the rest of it. Um, so what do we do in terms of supporting communities and, and developers to make community benefit funds work? Um, first of all, starting off, um, once the money is, is there, uh, or sorry, before the money is there, and uh, uh, kind of setting the fund up, essentially, we provide a governance function, and I'll come on to that in a lot more detail in a moment. Um, we generally speaking, once we've entered into uh, an agreement or contract with a developer, um, we'll also enter into a memorandum of understanding with an appropriate body within the community. Often, but not always, that's the community council. Sometimes it isn't a community council there, or there isn't one that is functioning, um, and so it might be a different kind of organisation. But that really sets out um, how the fund will work, how the community council will be involved, and how the community will be involved in the fund. Um, we'll then, generally speaking, seek to establish and support a community Panel, and I'll come into the, on to community panels uh, again in a bit more detail uh, shortly. They're kind of the quiet powerhouses, and they are really key role in governance uh, of the fund, and are kind of at the centre of our kind of approach. We'll then uh, work out a fund strategy with the panel, and that may be involved by some initial community profiling or community planning work, which we've heard about earlier, um, if that's been done, or it may be that we're able to work with the community to do that. And in many cases, and the developer that we've been working with has actually provided some funding for that process. But also, we now know from Iona that there is also a CARES fund available to pay for some of that as well. And the fund strategy will generally set out you know, what kind of broad themes might the fund focus on, what size of grants might be available, how often will they be available, those kind of things. And then we'll work to develop fund materials, application forms, and that kind of thing. And, and just promote the fund. There's a web page um, that the fund will have on our website, which will tell you all you need to know about applying to the fund. Uh, and work to have some kind of launch to kick the fund off again with the community and the developer. Um, we do a whole range of things, the full life cycle of grant uh, management, and increasingly we are able to do loans as well uh, to administer loans. Um, but I won't go into these in, in much detail, but it's the full cycle of um, receiving and assessing applications. Assessment is a, a key thing that we do. So um, when a proposal comes in, it will go to an independent uh, uh, person outside of the community that we will employ to assess the viability of the project and the competence of the organisation. And that includes a phone call to every single applicant to just tease some more information out. And that kind of neutral objective assessment balanced by the local knowledge that's brought to the process by the community panel, which I'll come on to. Um, so we support the panel throughout the decision making. We do all the, the kind of paperwork and so on around administering the grant and monitoring and working with awardees just to make sure um, that they're reporting back um, on, on what's been achieved. Um, and we will develop reports both to the community council and to the developer annually. And just doing our ongoing kind of promotion of the fund, including press activity and development case studies. And increasingly, we're doing fund evaluations. We recently did an evaluation or commission an independent evaluation of the Ansui Fund, um, and copies of that report are available through the marketplace at our stall. And then we're able to sit down with the fund and just kind of ask how's it going? What's working? What's having an impact? Is this fund delivering what, what, what it set out to deliver? Um, and how is it working on the panel, how the process is working, is everything making sense, what feedback are you getting from the community, um, you know, what can be changed, what can be improved. A key part of what the Foundation Scotland does is provide a governance function, and that basically means that Foundation Scotland kind of underpins governance and reporting and frees up the community to focus on impact um, and decision making and, and, and that kind of thing. 
So effectively funds sit within Foundation Scotland's accounts, they come into our account and they sit as a, as a ring fence fund within our accounts and they cannot be used for any other purpose other than what's set out in the fund agreement. And we are annually audited, very rigorous audit, and we are annually report to Oscar for each individual ring fence charitable fund we report to Oscar. So we take all that off your hands as a community, so you don't need to set up an individual company and register as a charity and do all that reporting and all the rest of it yourselves. If you use a third party uh, provider like Foundation Scotland, we take that off your hands. Um, and also we provide regular fund statements to the panel and the panels scrutinise that and make sure that every single penny is accounted for. So that happens every panel meeting. Um, so that's, that's kind of underpinning and freeing up the community. So what are the pros of, of the model? Access to a full range of fund administration and support services, as I've mentioned. We've got a track record uh, working with developers. Decision making stays local. Communities decide how the money is spent through the community panel, which we'll come on to, uh, and government supporting requirements taken care of. It can be set up pretty quickly, you know, usually within a couple of months, uh, if need be. Um, there won't be any local employment involved in actually managing funds, because that will be done by Foundation Scotland, but you could argue there's other ways to generate local employment through community benefit funds, um, and we do charge a fee. And that is usually paid for by the developer, but where the developer can't or isn't willing to pay and communities still want to use our services, then they can decide to pay our fee. Just coming on to the community panel, these are kind of the broad areas that the community panel kind of has, has influence over. Fund governance is a code of conduct, it's a conflict of interest policy, um, it's a, an element of open recruitment to, to, to forming fund panels community panels and will support the panel in understanding and carrying out their role through induction and training um, and everything that the panel does has to, it, sorry, is guided by a terms of reference which is effectively the rule book for the community panel but is developed in partnership with the community council and with the wider community. Um, in terms of fund strategy, the, the, the panel might be involved in overseeing the commissioning of community plans or uh, community consultations, which have been talked about earlier today, uh, and deciding how the fund will work in terms of these things here, um, whether it's open grant making or it's targeted commission grant making, what priorities to focus on, and those kind of things. And then in terms of implementing, the panel is involved in promoting the fund, making decisions over, over what proposals are funded, um, keeping an eye on awards, taking feedback from the community, um, and, and passing it on to us and feeding back to the community as to how the fund's been used. And then importantly, there's a review process that they're involved in, involving critical reflection and, you know, and, and really looking at the impact of the fund, as I said, whether things need changed and how the panel's working. And here's a panel. Uh, so this is um, the Eon Camster Community Fund Panel, and one of them bakes cake to mark the launch of the fund. Um, and recently we we did a survey of panel members, and somebody actually um, suggested earlier on that we actually have a conference for pa panel members, and I think that's a really good idea, to bring everyone together and share the learning. But we, we did a survey of panel members, and we got a pretty good response rate, and we asked them, what are the things you really like about being involved in panel, and the things that are working, and what are the things that you don't like, and that don't often work, or are less easy. Um, and the things they liked about being on a panel were, um, working with other panel members. Things they didn't like about being on the panel were working with other panel members. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other things that came up were um, they really like, they really valued being involved in distributing funds locally for good causes and help, basically feeling that they're helping the community. Uh, they like learning from other panels and that was facilitated by Foundation Scotland. They like finding out what's involved, how the nitty gritty works, and how the strategic elements of fund distribution work. And they, they liked Foundation Scotland's involvement in terms of good facilitation of meetings and, and finding direction on principles, the principles involved. They found it difficult uh, to be sometimes uh, to agree on rejection reasons, so obviously difficult to say no and difficult to kind of on the reasons why and difficult to give that feedback sometimes to, to applicants uh, or reduce levels of awards 
and also the, the usual challenges around you know, time involved and voluntary nature of role and so on. <clears throat> a few examples, I've just given the three minute warning, so I'm actually going to skip through this example. Um, but Carol was very much involved in this one, which is helping uh, uh, the panel that looks over oversees Eon Rose Hall um, kind of take stock after two or three years of, of working on that fund and five years of working on the Acani Fund and, and pull together uh, or revise the kind of framework for the fund based on experience and learning today. I think that was a really valuable process for them and for applicants. Uh, I'll need to skip over this one as well, but we were quite involved in helping um, the, the RWE local bank uh, panel uh, develop a community profile for the Glen Fargo area, which really came from them and has helped them prioritise what they fund and what and what they don't fund and actually give them a mandate from the community to say no to some things and yes to others. But I really wanted to focus on the idea of a single charitable trust. So some communities that happen to be in really windy places are, 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 being, are either benefiting from a large number of funds or are being approached by a large number of developers. They've got multiple funds operational and more in the pipeline. And often developers are looking for their own approach and their own setup. And that often means a plethora of administrative arrangements and small funds, meaning more work and less impact potentially. And there's only so many evenings in a week, you know? We can't be sitting on a pan they can't be sitting on a panel for every single fund. So the community of Old Loose in Dumfries and Galloway came to us and said, look, we're currently receiving five funds and we've got four more potentially in the pipeline. If they all get through planning and get consent, we're going to be receiving nine funds from eight different developers. This is just too much for us as a small community and it's also not going to achieve the best impact. And they asked us to find a solution for them so they can move from this to something a bit more like this. And so what we did was, <coughs> We facilitate agreement with existing developers and work with the community and the developers to provide a single charitable trust that sits with Foundation Scotland and the developers have all agreed to pay into that. So the front end, the kind of uh, what, what applicants experience is an application, a single application to one trust. And there's one panel that oversees that trust and makes decisions on it. But behind the scenes, Foundation Scotland is helping that community report, account for and report on every fund back to every developer. And everyone who gets a grant for that will get an offer letter that tells them who's actually providing the grant funding. So the developers still get their branding and their recognition out of it. But it's a lot easier for the community. And we assist them with selecting the panel and actually opening up the panel to some younger members of the community and more women, because it was mostly men at a certain age who were, were on the panel at that point. Um, and our fees on a slide, sliding scale, depending on how big the fund gets, are is proportion of fund reduces. Um, so, and then when new funds come along, um, new developers coming in have a clear preferred route and the community directs them towards the single trust. So we're quite excited about that and the Old Loose Community Trust launches formally the press launch on this Monday coming and we are, are increasing, uh, experiencing more and more interest from communities for this kind of model, particularly where they've got lots of funds coming in, it's all getting a bit complicated and a bit much work really for volunteers which Charles picked up on in his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, John.